Hey folks, welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how we took an inexpensive entry-level clanky clattery mountain bike and we took it from this to this and we did it with high-end professional parts, not the cheap stuff, but we did it all on a very shoestring budget. I'm going to show you all the tips and tricks on how we got there in this video. So how we're going to do the upgrade on this bike is we're going to do it in several stages. We're going to do a stage where we just do the drivetrain, a stage where we just do the suspension, fit meaning handlebars and neck and things like that, and then our brakes and kind of other add-ons. So the reason I'm doing it in stages is because you may not have to do everything I'm doing. If the trails that you're riding don't mean you need new suspension, don't spend the money. Um, if the drivetrain is adequate for you don't spend the money i would take this thing out on a couple rides before you start upgrading and to really figure out where the weak points are and where you need to upgrade i'm also going to show you at the very end of this video some things you can do for cheap or for free to get this bike performing a little bit better so let's get started stage one we're up at the front of the bike suspension now these are rock shocks and i'm going to tell you why we're going with rock shocks even though everybody else seems to be going with bucklows and other things i can't pronounce so this is a budget bike. People tend to go with budget forks, and this is not a place you should be skimping, but you can actually get these for cheaper than you'd be getting the cheap ones. Doesn't make sense? Hear me out. I picked these things up for 50 bucks on Craigslist. These are Rock Shocks. These retailed for 525 when they were new. Found a guy on Craigslist, he was parting out a bike, um, and these were on the list of things he was parting out. 50 bucks for these things. Um, the reason I don't like those other forks First reason, if you'll ever look on the back of the tube here, it's got a little sticker that says, not for downhill, not for free ride, not for jumps. I don't know what they're good for at that point. And frankly, that tells me they'd be dangerous if you really rode them hard. But the other thing is, there's no warranty, there's no support, there's no spare parts. If you blow a seal on one of these, I can go to RockShock and get a new seal. Those, you can't. One thing to pay attention to though, when you are looking at forks, is what kind of hub you need to use with that fork. The forks on a lot of these bikes are set up with wheels that have a quick release. That thing has a through axle, so you're going to need a hub with a through axle, and in this case, even boost spacing. So you do want to pay attention to that. Now, a new wheel set should cost three to five, six hundred dollars. I picked up a new wheel set for forty bucks. Again, on Craigslist, these things are totally straight, not a ding, scratch, anything in them. These were takeoff. Somebody upgraded to carbon wheels. I picked these up for a song. So. Between the forks and the wheels, we should get started. There's one other thing you're gonna to need to do this, and that is a new headset. So we're gonna start by installing a new headset. Now you can see this headset here. We're going with a Jessica headset. It's a good value headset, not too much money. And it's anodized red, and everybody knows red makes you go faster. Let's get into the bike. We'll start by removing the front wheel with the quick release and then grabbing an Allen wrench to remove the stem and then finally the fork from the headset. Now I kept hearing these things were heavy. They are, they are no joke. I'm gonna get a, get a scale on these things. We're gonna see what these things come in at. Okay, so these are coming in at 6.36 pounds for these forks. Now let's compare them to the RockShox. And the RockShox already feel lighter and they're a much more substantial fork. So let's get the scale on this one. 4.7 pounds. So we're already shaving a ton of weight off here. Now let's get the rest of this put together. Next is to remove the bearing cups. Now you can do this with a hammer and a screwdriver. They do have specific made tools, but I've always just used this. It's always worked just fine. Now we're gonna prepare our new headset for installation. I always like to cover this with a little bit of grease. This will prevent things from seizing together if you ever have to remove it again in the future. Now installing the new cups is something you are going to have to use a cup press for. A lot of people try to smack these in with hammers and it almost never works and it usually does more damage than good. So make sure to get yourself one of these. They're not that expensive. I'll have a link to the one that I'm using down in the description below if you need to pick one up. Next we reinstall the fork. First we put the bearings on the fork tube and then put the fork up through the headset. Put the bearing on top. The spacers go on after that followed by the stem, and then we can tighten everything up. So now we've got the front fork installed. We've already shaved some weight off the bike, and I also put the front wheel on just to check fitment. Now let's move into the handlebars. Now, I guess we'll call this phase two, but this really should be kind of the first thing you do is really making sure the bike fits you. So I prefer a more upright riding position. I'm, I'm getting old. 
my back hurts. So I like bars with a little bit of riser and also like a shorter stem. So when we put on the front fork, part of that is replacing the stem. It holds the whole thing together. I put on a shorter front stem. All this stuff I'm gonna have linked down below so you can check out what I'm using. You don't have to use the same stuff, but um, I'm using pretty inexpensive stuff to keep the budget down. So I'm gonna start showing the prices up on the screen here to show you where we're at so far budget-wise. And uh, as you saw before, we put a little carbon fiber spacer in there because carbon fiber, carbon fiber makes you go faster. Now another part of doing the handlebars and setting up all your control points and adjusting the bike for you is the grips. Grips are a really personal thing. Some people like really fat grips, some people like little skinny grips. Um, I kind of go both depending on what kind of stuff I'm riding. What I don't like are junky grips and these grips, the ones that came on it are trash. We're upgrading to these. Now these ones, the ones that it came with are lock-on grips. They didn't lock, they were junk. So we're going with these ones. These are an inexpensive grip but it's got an actual aluminum lock ring on there so when we slide this thing in it won't budge now right now we've just got the left side to set up because we still got some controls on the right side we're going to be working on later but let's at least get the left side done and get these grips on it, these also come with really nice bar end caps anodized red because red makes you go fast so let's do that side there we go those are properly locked on not going anywhere Now another really common upgrade on these is the pedals. And these actually come with metal pedals, but if you can see here, one good hard ride and I trash these. So we're gonna be pulling these off and replacing them with these Rock Bros pedals. Now a lot of people also replace the cranks. We may do that in the future, but we're not doing it at this point because the cranks are actually adequate. I expect they will break them sometime soon though, and then we will upgrade it. But right now, we're just gonna stick to the pedals. So now that I got the forks done, the brakes done, pedals, controls, all that stuff done, I'm gonna change gears, literally. We're gonna look at the drivetrain. Now, I'm gonna go with the Box 3 drivetrain. I have the Box 2 drivetrain on my other bike and I'm gonna do a comparison video between the two to give kind of a head-to-head, a, a -head, but I've been really, really happy with the box on my other bike, so we're gonna put it on this one. This is the slightly more budget-friendly version. Well, that's the thing. Um, they gave me a chain without a master link. So I'm gonna just try breaking the chain with a, a chain breaker and we'll see if we can put it back together. Um, I guess we're just gonna go for it. With the chain out of the way, now we can remove the derailleur. And then install our new one from Box Components. With the derailleur installed, we can turn our attention to the next step of the drivetrain, and that is installing the new cassette. Now, for something like this, you are going to probably need a cassette tool or a cassette wrench, and I do have a link down below to a complete toolkit that should have most of these tools in it that I picked up relatively cheap if it's something you need. The next component of the group set to install is the shifter that goes up on the handlebar. Now, this all came complete in one set from Box, and I will have a link down below to the entire group set. This is much cheaper than going with a Shimano or SRAM set, and I've actually found the quality to be on par or better. I've been really, really happy with it. Then we continue running the new cable down the length of the frame, and we're actually reusing the old housings. That way you can get the exact right fit onto the frame and running it all the way around and into the derailleur. Now it's time to install the chain and then break the chain down to the correct length. And the way you're gonna do this is you're gonna wrap it around the front sprocket and then around the rear cassette, weave it through the derailleur, and you wanna set this up in the smallest gear on your rear derailleur. Then take a little bit of the slack out of the derailleur so there's a little bit of tension on the chain and make the chain that length. From there, you can shorten it further if you need it. If you realize you have too much slack in the chain, it's easier to take more off than add more on. For this, you will need a chain breaking tool, and that should come with that tool set that I mentioned earlier in the video, but it'll be linked down below if you need it. Now we can grab one of the pedals and run it through its gears. Now you may have to adjust the tension on the cable and the limit screws, but this should get you up and running. All right, so now it's brakes time. So like I had mentioned before, this bike originally came with cable brakes and they were good, but not great. And I wanted better stopping power. So I picked up a set of Shimano disc brakes. These also have larger discs than the originals, but Shimano disc brakes off of Craigslist. Same guy I got the forks from. So these were normally a couple hundred dollars, got them for 50 bucks. So let's get these suckers put on. 
Now, if you do pick up a set of used brakes, make sure you get these adapters. These set the brake caliper for the right height for the rotors that you're gonna be using. I also had to use these little adapters because the rotors that I was getting were for a different style hub, and I will have these also linked down below on the off chance that you do need them. I repeated the same process for the brakes on the front of the bike as well. So just got the tires mounted on the wheel. We went tubeless with these. We're actually using the original tires. We're gonna see how it goes before we spend more money on new tires. So we cut down weight on the wheel and we cut down weight on eliminating the tube. And I just weighed them and we're cutting two and a half pounds off the rear wheel. And that's after adding a probably significantly larger and a little bit heavier uh, set of gears on there. So two and a half pounds lighter on the rear, we're probably gonna be about the same up on the front. So we should be able to shave about five pounds off the bike just with the wheels and the combo of the lighter wheels and going tireless. But that's more than just shaving that weight because a lot of it is at a rotating mass, which makes an even bigger deal if you're trying to accelerate or climb. So let's get the other one switched over and get the rest of the bike put together. Take it for a spin. So now that we've had all this time and hard work going to this bike to make it our own, we need to make it look our own. So we're gonna actually be removing the stock stickers. We're gonna be using a plastic razor blade. You wanna use a plastic one, that way it will not scratch the paint underneath the stickers. And then my favorite sticker remover, rapid remover. This stuff does a great job of removing adhesives, but it doesn't screw up the paint. You do of course wanna do a test piece, but I've used it on a lot of different things. It's always worked really well. After cleaning it up, we hopped on our vinyl cutter and made a sticker with our channel name. It's actually our other channel name, Do It Yourself Dad. So we put that on there. If you wanna check out that other channel, it'll be linked down below, as will that rapid remover stuff I just mentioned. And with that, it's time to get this bike out on the trail. So I hope this video helped you out. I hope it inspired you to grab that bike out of the garage that's maybe been sitting there for a bit and do some upgrades and get back out on the trail. Now, if you have any questions about the build, please be sure to leave them down in the comments below. I'm happy to help you out. And if you've got any ideas for upcoming videos that you'd like yeah, to see on the not. channel, leave those down below as well. Hit that subscribe button for more awesome content. Give this video a great big thumbs up. And of course, thanks for watching.